So welcome back to my channel. This is Gamer Dom and another one of these sort of noobs beginners guides to the tank classes in World of Tanks. So I did uh, one on light tanks, which actually spawned into two on light tanks because I got some feedback uh, from that. Say so people were saying, Dom, that's all very well. You showing how to play light tanks, but uh, you didn't show how it happens in in city maps, which are probably the ch most challenging environment for light tanks and indeed artillery to operate in and so I did a follow-up one just to show some examples of that now as I said my caveat on all these videos is that I'm not claiming to be the world's authority on World of Tanks I have played nearly 40,000 games now sad I know uh, and played for a number of years now and I'm a follower of history um, and a big, uh, big enthusiast of armoured warfare generally. So I think that gives me a little bit of an insight into a how the game works and also how these classes of vehicles were intended to operate in reality. And one of the things I found over the years, and particularly I think in the last year or so, more than anything else, has been um, a lot of people getting very frustrated trying to pay tanks in the way they weren't designed. So I thought that was the rationale for doing this series was to take a look at individual classes and try and give some guidance to the newer pro players. So for you vet veterans out there, then uh, you know this isn't targeted for you, but hopefully if you are watching, then you might find something interesting or something you can pick me up on or add to in terms of the comments down below. So I want this to be interactive. So any feedback, very, very welcome. Please, please give it. So uh, this edition, edition three, I'm um, going to be looking at the dreaded self-propelled gun, the artillery class in World of Tanks. Probably the most single most hated and maligned class of vehicles there is in the game. Not probably, it definitely is. Um, if you are choosing to play this class of vehicle, I hope you have a thick skin um, because you will be abused by your teammates and your enemy it by equal measure it's not as bad as it used to be where the chat was you could see the chat from the enemy as well as your own team um, but even so it's pretty toxic out there if you hadn't already noticed and none more so than to artillery class so artillery well as, as the name is you know hopefully self-explanatory this is uh, the armored version of artillery that you get um, you know in in all armies artillery is a class of, sh of, of gun that fires largely a, um, a high explosive round over very long distances and um, is used as a sort of support thing so artillery traditionally was used to break the line to destroy emplacements to soften up the enemy before the main attack went in um, with the advent of armored warfare a lot of these artillery were mounted on vehicles initially just trucks and then increasingly on armored vehicles um, and that was because um, in the second world war um, tanks were collected into armored divisions and armored brigades and armored regiments and they need the tanks alone couldn't operate on the battlefield they needed the support of infantry they needed the support of engineers and of course artillery and what better way to do that when you've got uh, tanks operated uh, operating was to put um, the guns on vehicles and particularly on tracked vehicles so they could keep up uh, they could support those other fast moving vehicles so that's why you have uh, self propelled guns that's what the name means they're guns that are self propelled SPGs um, very very interesting I thought you'd like to know that anyway enough of the history what does it mean in the game well it's a support class um, this is a weapon that is not repeat not designed to be used as a direct upfront fighting machine I see, I'm sure you all do, when you play lower tier games, some poor sausage who has no idea what they're doing with artillery, rushing forward uh, at the front line, um, trying to fire at somebody uh, in, in front of them, missing by a mile. The return shot kills them in one or two shots because these things don't have many hit points and they don't have much armor. And he dies and they probably go away thinking, what a shit game this is and never come back. Um, so 
don't be tempted <laughs> play your artillery from the back this is a base camper this is a tank that uh, you sit back you you observe what is going on in the battlefield and you try and support your teams you try and counteract enemy uh, concentrations of tanks and you try and support your friends as much as possible even if they don't appreciate what you're doing for them and most cases they don't it's a thankless task being artillery so there were quite a few changes um, artillery is probably one of the most cla uh, changed classes of vehicles in the game um, Back in the day, these things, particularly the higher tier artillery, were the banes of everybody's existence. They had, ex they have extremely high caliber shells um, that would potentially one shot destroy outright with one hit pretty much any comparable tank they would come up against. Particularly open tap open top vehicles so you have something like that has no roof on its turret this uh, artillery shell lands on that turret it would hit you for full effect and pretty much destroy everything they are also very very good at doing module and crew damage so knocking out tracks knocking out guns knocking out the driver the gunner whatever it is um, and, and again that's something they still are pretty good at but one of the things that changed probably about a year ago now maybe a bit longer actually wargaming got fed up with all the toxicity around artillery and all the uni scum worrying about being one-shotted by artillery who had no skill to do it um, we'll talk about that some more in a bit um, but um, and so they modified the whole thing so basically um, when a when a gun goes over a certain caliber which tends to be around tier five to six um the gun doesn't any longer have big good penetration so the shell is pretty lackluster in terms of its penetration it therefore doesn't penetrate even soft uh, even the soft tops of heavy tanks as easily as it once did and therefore the damage it inflicts per hit is much much reduced um, but as compensation for the fact that it doesn't do that much damage they inst instigated something called stun so uh, artillery shells don't just hit the target they hit because an armor piercing shell or, a, or an APCR shell or a heat shell when it hits a fixed point on a target it will go through or bounce off whatever happens HE shells don't operate like that they hit and they explode on the outside and they do a concussive effect um, from that point so even if they don't hit the target they send out blast wave that can be quite substantial you get to some of the high tier uh, artillery and the blast circle for these things is huge absolutely en enormous and the closer you are to the impact point the more damage and the more stun they cause so um, yeah and the effect of being stunned if you haven't already encountered this yourself is that your tank doesn't and your crew do not respond as well as they once did so it's almost like they've been killed um, the the tank does everything slower um, it's less effective in every single way for a certain duration which again is dependent on the type of shell the, the caliber of shell and how close it was to hit to the point of impact so if artillery lands a shell right on top of your tank it will do the maximum amount of stun that is possible minus any neg any um, impact that a lot of armor would have so it's a particularly heavily armored tank it will have less effect and if it's got something called a spool liner a piece of equipment that um, protects the crew much better the impact of the stun will be much more reduced so again we'll get onto that some more so artillery let me show you that and the, the other thing to say about artillery is there are different much like there are within all the classes there are different sort of subclasses they're not as noticeable in artillery as they are in others but still there are some finer points that you need to be aware of the first thing you need to be aware of is what type of gun you have on these things so 
that's, it would seem fairly obvious, but what I don't mean in terms of just caliber, but the way it operates. So let me bring up uh, this oddity. This is the British Tier 7 tank, uh, um, sorry, self-propelled gun, the Crusader SP. Um, very, very odd piece of artillery. Drives faster backwards than it does forwards. Um, it also has two guns that are available. There is the stock gun, which is this uh, 45, uh, 4.5 inch gun, which is the same gun as the tier uh, 5 and tier 6 has. And then it has the top gun, which is this 5.5 inch gun. So only an inch difference. And, you know, ooh, uh, misses, that doesn't make much difference. Yes, it does. Um, and I'll tell you for why. A, because 4.5 is underneath the cap in terms of um, having splash. So this thing does not have any splash. It also is a much shorter range gun. Here you can see 499 shoot radius. That's how far, 499 meters is how far it will fire. This gun, the top gun, 1,326 meters. So what's that, three times further, nearly? Um, this gun will fire. Now what that means in terms of practicalities is that with the shorter gun you need to be closer to the action. It's no good sitting right back. You need to be up close and and you need to be firing at two, you know, 300, 400 meter radius um, to, to, to have any chance of hitting anything. When you go to the bigger guns um, you can sit much further back and and, and fire you know from there so different type of play style it's really really important that when you uh, pick up your artillery for the first time you look at its range you look at whether it's got splash and you look at the mobility of the vehicle to see what kind of role you're likely to play now this thing the crusader has pretty good mobility for an artillery and therefore much like its predecessor the fv304 better known as the burt which is down at tier six these things and the bishop which is down at tier five these things were designed to be just behind the front line so they gave immediate support to the tanks and infantry um, and that's how you have to play them. You have to be not far from the front line, which means you have to be really, really careful. You have to pay careful attention to what is going on and not be afraid to bug out when things look a bit ropey because artillery generally have two things in common uh, pretty much across the board. They have almost no armor and very, very few hit points. If you get spotted, oh, the other thing to say about artillery in that context is people love shooting artillery. So give a choice between shooting, um, you know, a tier 10 tank in the rear and a tier 8 artillery. Now everyone's going to shoot the artillery pretty much every time. Um, so if you're not paying attention, they will go for you and that will be your game over. So knowing the range of your artillery and knowing how mobile your artillery is crucial to how, do you, how you will play it in the game. The bigger guns can stand back from much further away and fire you know, without being seen for long periods of time. That doesn't mean you don't keep attention to what's going on on the map because you absolutely have to and if you want to play the game play artillery properly and actually do a decent job for your team you have to be aware of what's going on and you have to know your role in terms of how you support the team this is a class like no other in terms of support I mean, I mentioned light tanks are, are crucial as a support vehicle artillery even more so they they cannot perform on their own once your cover's gone, once the lights have gone, once the, your heavy tanks have gone, once the TDs have gone, you do not last five minutes in artillery against enemy. You may get one shot off before you get killed, but you have terrible view range, very little armor, and very few hit points. You will die very, very rapidly, which means you need to play the role of keeping your team alive. And, you know, I, one of the things I feel very sorry for is those sausages that you see very uh, low tier, who really don't know what they're doing with their artillery. They've just got their tier two artillery or two, three artillery. And you see them rushing forward to the front line and, and trying to dirt people with a gun. And, you know, and they die very, very rapidly and they get disillusioned. They don't play again. And, and that's really sad because 
A, they obviously don't understand what artillery is about, and B, they haven't actually looked at your tank. And if there's one, one rule across all these videos, I would say, is look at your tank. Be, before you play it, before you click battle, look at it see whether it's a, got good armor what's its gun depression like what's the crew like i've got in it what's the is this fully upgraded what's its mobility like how many hit points have i got um and just have that refresh that before you click that battle button now when you've played for years you get to know the vehicles a lot better it's less you know you you know these things a lot quicker However, when you're near into the game, you've got to learn the tanks. You've got to learn how they play. It's like when you unlock a brand new one and you've just bought it, you've been in your garage. Um, it takes you a good few games generally to get used to how it plays, the different play style, the different capability of it. So you do need to be very careful about that and you need to look at it. And artillery is exactly the same. So look at your vehicle before you play it. Look at what it's good at. Now, on this case here, you can see um, the stock gun, five rounds per minute, as opposed to 2.07 on the bigger shell. Penetration, 28 on the small, 28 millimeters. That's all you get. 35 on the uh, bigger gun. Still not great. Average damage, 450 and 600. Now that sounds a lot. 600 sounds a lot, but remember that's a value for full penetration, and you don't often get a full penetration. But that's why they are still very, very effective against lightly armoured or open top vehicles because potentially even a tier 7 artillery like this can be doing 600 average damage to a vehicle if it penetrates. And of course it will automatically penetrate through an open top vehicle because there's nothing not to penetrate. Uh, like, and similarly the thing to remember with all artillery is it does damage uh, to modules and to crew members. Um, so even when it doesn't do a huge amount of actual damage, chances are it will do damage uh, to modules, it will knock tracks off, it will knock um, damage fuel tanks, it will damage guns, etc, etc. It might knock out the driver, might knock out the commander, whatever. So that's the other thing these things do. Dispersion of the base gun, 0.66, is horrible which is the same on the next gun. So dispersion is terrible, which is basically accuracy. These things are not accurate. They're area effect weapons. However, you can see on the 5.5 inch gun, we've got the stun mechanic, which we do not have on the base gun. So this thing has 13.2 second duration, minimum duration of stun and 22 maximum. So as I said, that will be um, 22 seconds is the maximum amount in theory if you dropped a shell on the tank directly on the tank you would do 22 seconds of stun to that tank however it's modified by whether the tank target has got um, a spool liner on it and whether or not there's a lot of armor on it that's so there's a little bit of intangibility but potentially 22 seconds um, now we don't have a radius here do we hang on let me just pull up the radius here we go, so on the shell it has a 7.2 meter blast radius. Um, so when the shell lands, everything in 7.2 meters of that impact zone can potentially be affected. So what you often get with artillery is they'll hit one target and stun another one beside that target. Because <clears throat> really where artillery is particularly strong is in targeting groups of enemy vehicles. That's what they're very, very strong. So, and, and indeed what they need to be doing is targeting those kind of, uh, uh, of things. Because if they can see a group of heavy tanks together in a, in a particular area, then they can, you know, hit multiple targets at one time. And there is a class, there is a medal called the Bombardier Medal, which is uh, a fairly rare one. Uh, which artillery get more than anybody else because it is killing two enemy tanks or more two or more enemy tanks with one shell um, and artillery are well capable of doing that as are um, any HE firing gun for that matter so what else to say about artillery um, crew skills is, is, is something that's very interesting and, and people have different viewpoints on, on crew skills now this is my opinion on it uh, I'm not, again I'm not saying these are particularly um, uh, foolproof 
but um, you know I think brothers in arms is good because it helps the reload sk speed of the gun so you can load quicker six cents on your commander is always useful but I think it's probably the second skill you take because generally you know when you've been spotted because you get shot at because everybody loves shooting at artillery um, for the gunner uh, having something like dead eye so you do even more module damage is very very good designated target I've only just started that on this gunner but basically that allows you to um, see a target longer um, let me find the exact wording Oops it up just one second here we go so um, makes the targeted enemy vehicle visible for two more seconds so when a target has been spotted there's a period of time before it disappears again from your map if you've got this uh, perk at a hundred percent you get an extra two seconds so that's really effective for artillery other things to have very good to have is uh, camo because you want to be concealed. I put um, uh, off-road driving on this guy because he, this crew was on the uh, FE304 before I sold it, before it became nerfed to ex out of existence. And it was a very mobile artillery, so putting off-road driving made sense. It doesn't anymore, and I'll probably retrain that away. Um, so, yeah, those kind of adrenaline rush, another good one. When you've been shot at, you're on low health. It just helps you reload the gun much quicker uh, for the loader. So, um, what else to say about artillery? I think the best thing to do is to play a couple of games and try and highlight some of the best processes. Oh, one other thing. I, I mentioned it briefly um in terms of uh, range but also arc is important so different tanks have different artillery have different um arcs of fire what do i mean by arc but that's the the, the how high the loop if you like on the shell fire because these things fire don't fire direct they fire indirectly they fire over things um so a gun like this crusader you can see the gun can drop you know right up and point much higher which means the shell fires you know much higher into the air and then trajectory brings it down and it will land down behind a building or behind a, uh, a hillside much much easier that's really really crucial f that you are aware of how much the trajectory is it also means this thing could park much closer behind a, uh, a building or something like that and still fire over it because the gun will elevate enough to fire over then you get something like this thing. This is the French tier 8 uh, artillery, the Lorraine. This thing does not have that elevation. You can see here this top of the of the hull here prevents the, sh the, the gun raising up too far. You can't get it up very much in a French tank, French artillery. It's much stronger at firing a flatter trajectory shell, um, which means it tends to be more accurate and certainly if you get into having to take down a light tank that's coming charging at you, you want to be in a French artillery because these things are much more capable of doing it than any other class than anybody else. Um, but in terms of uh, firing over uh, or to a target that's hidden, concealed behind cover, or indeed getting yourself behind cover, it's harder to do it in these things because they need... Uh, you know they need much more of a direct line of shot they can't lob it the shell quite as well as other classes of tanks so anyway as i say best thing let's take one out and i'll try and illustrate some of the tactics you need to employ in artillery hopefully so rather than me showing my feeble efforts at uh, artillery gameplay, I thought I'd feature a couple of games that have been sent by subscribers. So this is Black Wolf driving the Tier 9 British assault propelled gun. Um, this is the FV3805. And you can see it's here on the Arctic region. It's a Tier 10 game, a 5, 510 game. Um, and he is aiming already aimed already loading ready to go now one of the things he does in this game is to basically not go in the obvious positions for artillery now there's places where artillery always go and the problem with that is it's where artillery always go right so people know to aim 
bit, bit like sitting up here on this mountainside is an obvious place for TDs and you'll tend to get a how do you do like that now did he actually hit I don't think he did which is a shame these British artillery are notoriously inaccurate but have very very big splash so he's hitting the, um, the shift key which gives him the overview if you want to get a sort of more direct view once you're in that view like this you can hit the G button and that gives you this kind of like you'll find direct shots and what he's trying to do is aim for the the group of enemy tanks so there you go hit only a splash 405 damage on that uh, really tough object 705 7, 907 sorry um, and he's relocating after each shot that's because a good artillery player again will be keeping an eye on where the shells are coming from so they'll be looking at the obvious places they'll be trying to see the tracer that comes from um, the shot of, of rival artillery and will try and counter battery so he's trying to keep an eye on that object the, the the snarl up that's going in amongst these tanks is quite tough for him to get involved in because there's so many friends very very close by but now he's got a chance see the Jaegeru, nah, just splashed him just splashed him and the heavy line has fallen badly now your initial job whoop, don't aim at the, your initial job really as artillery is to blunt the enemy attack to target uh, big heavy tanks like a heavy tank number 4 or a heavy tank number 5 or an object um, that are really difficult to pen for the direct fire tanks and you don't want to waste your shells you want to try and make everything count so he's going for this VK, uh, VK, uh, WZ. See the shell come in there? Now that could well have been an enemy artillery there, just trying to counteract his fire. Because it's fairly obvious where he's going to be. And he's kind of in danger of being spotted himself in a minute. I don't know whether he has six cents. Using that rock to lob the shell over. And that was all talking about knowing the elevation on your gun. So do you know what your elevation is? Shell flight time is not very much, there we go, not very much at all. 400 hit on that Jaegeru. And he's concentrating fire at the tanks that are breaking through. And he's trying to break up their, um, stunt their attack. Now, at this stage of the game, it's about doing damage. Now, I think there's a point in the game where you just want to try and take guns out of the game. And you want to try and hit low value target or low health targets. At the moment he's just trying to help his guys out. He's trying to give them something something to, you know, stick around for really. There's the heavy tank. Gonna aim in on him as a priority because those things are tough. Shot in the air, nice. 300 hit. Relocates immediately again. There we go. That's what you need to do. Artillery will be looking at him. There is only one artillery, and it's particularly important when there's multiple artillery in the game. And particularly if the uh, XVM is telling you that artillery player is a good player. He's also telling his team when he's reloading. You do that by the X button and then selecting reload, and it will tell the team how long it is before your next shell is ready to go. Particularly important, again, when you're providing fire support and you're trying, particularly for you know things like scouts and what have you, so they know when to pop out and have another spot and try and light things up for you. The other thing to do, oh, well, there's an object over there, no, he's not changing his mind. The other thing you can do is telling people where you're targeting. Press the T button and it will tell the, it will show on the map where you are focused and where your shell is likely to fall, which A, it gives your friends a chance to move away, but also tells them that hey there's a big artillery shell on the way you might want to take advantage of it in terms of the guy's going to be um, you know stunned or or damaged or tracked or what have you so double function there so you've got to play sensibly in artillery it's one of these things that the, they get such a bad name in terms of oh they're just all you do is click and shoot click and shoot and it's true there's a degree of that but if you play it well you tell your team what you're doing you focus far on on threats particular nasty targets that the team can't deal with and you let your team know what you're doing so this uh, T, T10 uh, we can't get a shot on him unfortunately because he's oh no there we go 
Now he's trying to anticipate where he's going to be, but no joy. It's too tricky a shot. And really, you know, especially with his high tier artillery, you've got to take your time. Aim for the shots that you know will hit, rather than hit and hope. Another splash on that thing, and the Type 4's down. Type 4 is a big, heavy thing, and you know it takes a lot to take those down. Relocated again. Don't have to go far, but you've got a long reload, so you might as well use it moving around and making it harder for the enemy artillery if they happen to be looking at it. This game is 9 plays 10. Um, usual bitching going on amongst the team. You know, just what you expect, really. Right, we're reloaded. Let's aim in on that FV. Nice. F I keep saying FV. Why do I keep saying FV? Because you're stupid dumb. WZ. Can we get a shot on him? No. Hit the ra hit the rock in front. It's always going to be a tough shell. So it's 10-10 now. And our, ta our troops are, are getting into the cap. Enemy artillery is run, which means we don't have to worry so much about counter-battery fire. But now we need to try and support that push. So 2,000 damage. He's still worrying about that Jaegeru that's down there somewhere. It's very little point targeting the light tank unless it stays still. Oh, hello. There we go. It's worth us being aimed over that way. Shells in the air. Nice side shot and tracks the WZ. Very nice indeed. Again, even, even though the enemy artillery is unlikely to be targeting this way, he still relocates, he still gets himself ready, just in case enemy artillery are, po are, are keeping an eye on him. Again, a good artillery player will do that all the time. No chance of getting the shot over that rock. Again, this is part of the challenge. When you're fighting artillery, you need to go into places where you are RT safe. So places where... Oh, yeah, you knew, there you go. Oh, yeah, unlucky. Unlucky didn't kill that guy. You need to go into places where artillery aren't likely to be able to hit you. Now, you see what happened there. That Jaegeru saw the shot come in from the um, sh from the um, Death Star, and it missed. So he thought, right, I'm safe, and he popped back up again. And, of course, Black Wolf was waiting just for that moment. Can we get this guy? He's got his ass to us. Come on. Yes, we can get this. We can get this. Believe, believe, believe. Shot in the air. Oh, yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a hit up the exhaust pipe takes... Where bloody hell, look where their back chat artillery's got to. Won't do him any good. Death Star takes him down. Suddenly this game's turned around. It is 11 plays 12. There's the Yeguru. Can we finish him up? It'd be nice to get him as a last kill. Not sure we'll get much more. He's pulling back beauty of artillery is you can anticipate where he's going to be. You don't need much more than splash on him and there he goes. This thing has pretty good splash. So the, ta the attack's been blunted. However now we've got to try and push on their cap and there's this very good object 430U sitting there guarding the cap. There's also a light tank providing cover or providing covering fire. Eesh, he's going to be gone. I don't think we're going to get shot on him. So three versus two, but the RT can make a difference. It's pre-aimed here because he expects that um, light tank to come there, and sure enough he does, but the object takes him down. So it's one on three. Now, also like, he's moving a little bit closer. One of the things you, you need to recognize that artillery takes a long time for the shell to get there, so if you can get closer to the target without risking your vehicle, then do it, because the airtime is much, much reduced. See, that shell there took forever to land on the target. Which again is why, if you're moaning about being shot at by artillery, keep moving. It's much, much harder for artillery to hit you, because of course the shell time takes a long time to hit, come down to where the target is and if you're moving it makes it doubly hard so he's having to try and get ahead of the shot every time he does it means he re has to reacquire the target will that shell come in oh he stayed right there nice only th not a complete um, hit on him but uh, nice bit of damage nice bit of stun can our object finish him up one shell come on we can get this last kill come on black sun you can do it 
can we? It's only splash it. That's all we need. That's all we need. Come on, someone's going to get it. Is he going to get it? Oh, no, it's going to... I... No, Shitbone's going to get it, or Death Star's going to get him, I'm sure. Yeah, they did. What a shame. Never mind, it was a great game, nonetheless. Used his artillery to blunt the attack, and then went on the offensive with it. Really good job. Good. So a really good job from Black Sun there. Uh, he got the Ace Tanker for the FV 3805. He got Bruiser, got Arsonist, um, and uh, Gore's Medal for causing uh, 10 times your hit points in damage in an artillery. So really nice job. Finished up top of his team. 3,719 damage, 3 kills, 1048 base XP. Fired 16 shots, hit with 11 did damage with 11 also got seven lots of splash damage which is also really really cool he got 1119 um, damage caused to vehicles that have been stunned by him so that's another metrics where you get more credits for it 56 and a half thousand credits did use um, T uh, so cost him 20,000 but still made a 4,000 profit which in a tier 9 artillery is not bad at all and 1,500 assistant uh, 1,500 experience so lessons from that one um, fire and move fire the shell move after you fired just to avoid any incoming um, artillery counter battery fire um, use the terrain he got behind that big rock which allowed him to lob shells over he couldn't be seen or or hit um, he could fire over because of the trajectory of the shell um, focus on the breakthrough focus on the heavy tanks initially if you can get a shot on them try and break up the enemy um, concentration of tanks support your guys make it easier for them to deal with the, the heavy stuff target obvious places that's that balcony area on that on the Arctic where the where the TDs tend to sit. Uh, he targeted that virtually straight from the get go, and often you know people moan artillery is too powerful, but they go and sit in the most bleeding obvious places where any fool who's played any number of games will know there's a fair chance of art, of, uh, of of something sitting there TD light tank whatever it is. Um, so don't do the obvious thing because. A bored artillery player, an artillery player who hasn't got any other shot, may well just take a, sp a speculative shot at that bush that he knows nine times out of ten there'll be a light tank sitting in. Because you know what? Nine times out of ten there's a light tank sitting there. So there you go. So now I'm going to get the inevitable, oh, what about a city map then, Dom? And you're quite right. Um, city maps are not environments where artillery thrive naturally. Um, but let's have a look at this guy, Max Balding, driving the Tier 6 American artillery, the M44. Um, he's on Stalingrad, he's bottom tier, it's hard to think of anything worse in terms of um, you know, kind of how this game, game is set up. And if you look at the teams, it's fair to say statistically, and statistics lie, I know, um, statistically his team is by far the worst of the two. So. Again, with artillery in cities, it's all about trying to get some sight lines, some shot lines. It's really, really tough. And a lot of it comes by experience and knowing the points of aim. So he's come to this spot. You can see he's got a view straight down and early doors on those tanks that come to that, sh um, well, sort of barricade, if you like. Look at that. I only did just critical hit did the T-34, uh, which is a shame. And again, this is, you know, he's aiming at somewhere where he knows the chances are someone's going to be sitting there. Hasn't got much of an angle here. Puts a shot in the air. No notification. So probably missed. Probably hit the building in front. But you notice he take, he does the same things as before. He As the previous game with Black Wolf. He relocates after each shot. Just a little bit. Doesn't have to be a massive distance, but just a little bit to allow... Um, to make sure that if any artillery happen to be looking, uh, you're not going to be spotted and not going to be targeted. So he's seen that there's more of an attack coming in close here, and he's decided to aim for these guys here again. He's not using the um, direct fire option, the G button. Look at that, nice shot on that T-34-85. Again, relocates, moves, gets to a different spot, 
so that any counter battery is less likely to target him and be able to hit him. Now he's aiming for that, T that TD who's in a hold down position, who's holding up his team causing a few problems. Don't know whether he does pull out almost immediately after he's fired so I don't know unless it comes up with notification you've no idea whether he's splashed or where the shell's gone which is slightly frustrating but uh, so enemy have pushed all the way down the other flank oh there's a heavy tank number six shells in the air and he takes him down now he's noticed the enemy are breaking through the other flank and he's going to try and get in a position where he can support what's left of our team defending the cap area oof that Pershing um, yeah IS2 shells in the air it only does 11, 11, 11 damage. Again, still relocating, still taking that opportunity to keep moving, making sure that he's not doing the obvious thing. Again, I think, you know, it's one of those things people moan about artillery, um, about how unskilled they are, but a good artillery player will keep an eye on his minimap. He's watching, he, he was well aware of where the enemy tanks were and making sure that he was ready to have support the defenders it's th it's 3-7 this game is in real dire straits he was trying to target that Pershing and you know people will moan super unicums will moan particularly about targeting of good players and it, clearly he can see that that Pershing is presumably he's got his XVM running and he knows that Pershing is a pretty good player and he would like to try and hit him but he can't oh hello can we get a bombardier medal here Bombardier for killing two. No, just a nice hit on the WZ. It's four plays nine. He wants to try and finish up those light tanks if he can, because they will cause merry hell to him more than anything else. Oh, nicely done. Bit f oh, and he also got damage on the AMX 1375, so he's still there, clearly. Right, now we can turn our attention to the U to the guys pushing on our heavy. He's notified his team that that's where he's aiming. Mind you, then he goes for a different target. Guns out the game, that's what he's aiming for there. Takes down the uh, jumbo. That's what he was aiming for, and that's what you have to do. You have to sometimes swap priorities, aim for the, you know, early on it's about damaging and supporting your team. Later on it's about trying to uh, take guns out of the game and that's what he tried to do. Now he's got incoming. And our, our friendly artillery takes out that uh, T-34-85. It's 10 plays 11. There's three artillery on the enemy side, two on his side. There goes the T-34. Um, yeah, there goes the T29, sorry. Oh, uh, here comes one of their... Oh, we've got a double RT shuffle coming here. RT each way. Oh, yes. Nicely done. Counter battery from the artillery. You're going to use your repair or not bother? Yes, he's used his repair. Needs to get moving. Because artillery have put targeting here. And as soon as you like, there you go. He's it's now three all. Oh, wow. Who said artillery is boring? Again, what I liked in this replay was, apart from the fact it was a city map, is that he still continued to use the, the basic rule of thumb, which is relocate after each shot, if you possibly can, target and blunt the enemy attack, and then when they get the chance, when the game's going a little bit tits up, target weakened enemy tanks, take them out of the game, because that will help your team. Enemy artillery there. Did, did he actually spot that? No, he didn't even get assistance for that. Which is a shame. Now the three of them are also working together. They're all heading in the same direction. All within supporting areas of each other. Remember this guy is bottom tier. I know artillery doesn't matter quite so much. But he is still a bottom tier. Again, he's just waiting for his... He's actually quicker than the than the heavy tank. He's waiting for him to catch up. Again, something you don't see enough in, in end-game play, where they actually wait to support each other. How many times is, he, is your team winning 5-2 to two or something, and they all go in individually and get shot individually and killed off? 
Um, these guys, three of them left, and they're all together. They're all working together. Max is on five kills, I've just realised, so he's looking for a top gun here. Doesn't go in the cap circle, doesn't want to get... Ah! <laughs> there we go. So he didn't want to go in the cap circle because he didn't want to give away where he was. But the enemy haven't got the same problem. For some reason, one of them has gone in the cap circle. And it looks like he's alone because if the two of them are on there, they might have stood a chance. But one... Nah. Not so much. Now it's fairly again. There's some fairly obvious places for the uh, for him to be in the cap circle. So let's see what he can do. And again, you know, this isn't a typical game with artillery on a on a on a city map. You do need to be sometimes a bit aggressive, and that's what he's doing. Here we go. Can we get our extra kill? Oh no! Unlucky. Glancing blow, but reset the cap, and the Crusader is in all kinds of trouble. Aim back in. Ah, the other, the IS got him. The IS has got five kill. He's got five kills. Can they find the final artillery with six minutes to go? And who will get the, the who will get the uh, top gun? Max or the uh, artil or the uh, IS? American artillery is pretty mobile. Where is he going to be hiding? Little sneaky impromptu platooning. Looks like the AMX is going spotting for him, which is rather nice. He's asking the... Uh... Oh, see the tree go down there? That's a sure sign that's where the artillery is. Fires a blind shell. No joy. The tree went down backwards, if you like, towards us. So that means that the artillery is probably heading down the slope. It's just about relo reloaded. Is the AMX going to spot him? Is that another tree gone down there? There he is, there he is, there he is. Aiming in. Come on. He's telling his friend that he's there and he's aiming. And he gets him. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh no he didn't. The other guy got him. Oh well, never mind. GG, well played. So it's a shame he didn't get his uh, top gun there. But it was an ace tanker, bruiser, fighter got confederate and he also got bombardier for hitting uh, destroying two more vehicles with one shot so who was that must have been those light tanks huh didn't even see one of them go up but he uh, got two with one shot very nice um 1834 damage five kills 1144 base xp he fired 16 shots hit with seven did damage with seven and did nine lots of splash for that 1800 he also took one hit, which was the artillery shot, which did penetrate him, surprisingly. Um, I didn't get much uh, stun this time, only 244. But he got some reset points. Uh, did he get reset points? Yeah, he did. There you go, 56. There you go. Uh, 39,000 credits, didn't use much expenses, so just under 30,000 profit. And with some personal reserves running, 3,400 experience. So there you go. Nice game from Max, played that really well, supported his team um, and helped them towards a very unlikely victory actually. So again, golden rules for me on artillery play. Keep firm view on what is happening on the minimap. If there's any one class that, I mean keeping a view of what's happening on the minimap is really really important full stop, but particularly so in artillery. You need to see where the threat is coming from and you need to relocate and be ready to deal with it. You support the team. You are pure support class. Um, target uh, concentrations of enemy tanks if possible. 
target obvious places where uh, artillery or tar or TDs or light tanks might well sit. You know, if you play these other classes, you'll know where you go to. So why not put a blind shell into that position? Because, you know, that E1 position on Malafka, you know, you know that there's going to be, nine times out of ten, there's going to be a light tank hiding there. So why not have a shot um, if you're not doing anything else for that matter? Make sure that you... Um, you know at the point when you need to switch towards taking guns out of the game. If your team is struggling under pressure, um, then start targeting um, damage tanks to try and take them out of the game if at all possible. Um, notify your team where possible of reload time. So use that reload uh, announcement. Tell them when the next shells like to be going and use the targeting function to tell people where you're point of aim is so they know um, and if you see one of your friendly tanks getting in close don't fire that shell wait um, wait until they're clear even if you've marked it as a target just make a double check if you see a light tank flying in sometimes they'll just go in anyway and next thing you know you've tracked them or destroyed them or what have you and yeah you may get uh, turned blue or even banned for it uh, which is unfortunate um, relocate after every shell uh, doesn't matter where you are but, but there's some maps where it's very very obvious artillery go to um, you know probably two or three locations where typically artillery will be um, so if you're in those positions fire then move fire move and don't wait too long because if somebody is watching you watching that area they may well see the tracer shell come out and then they're immediately on you and they've launched their shell at you. So there you go, artillery, the most hated class of vehicle in the game. If you're gonna drive it, I hope you got thick skin. If you're gonna drive it, I hope you play it sensibly. Don't splash your friends, because that just pisses everybody off completely and makes the artillery have even more of a bad name than they already do. Uh, support the team, make sure you fire uh, in support of the team. Don't just go after the easy kills until there is the point where you need to knock guns out of the game and then, yeah, blast your way away. Now, much as this will annoy a lot of the um, super unicorns, mind you, they wouldn't be watching this video by now anyway, they'd be disgusted, um, but if there are any, um, good thing also for artillery to do is focus on the best enemy player. If you see that super unicorn, so XVM will allow you to see uh, who is the best player out there on the various teams, and uh, you've seen it on my my run-throughs you can see the little purple emblem that comes above their names if they're particularly good statistically um, and if they happen to be driving and making themselves available to be shot at for God's sake prioritize them first because a it pisses them at, pisses them off so that's always a good thing um, but B also uh, they are the best player and if they have to dodge artillery shells coming in on them regularly um, and sort of are getting damaged and stunned it will lessen their effect and lessen how well their enemy team will play because their best player is being either killed or kept busy or having to do dodge and do things he doesn't really want to do. So that's another thing to do about these artillery. In the meantime, you know, I hope you found this useful. Um, as I say, it, I'm not claiming to be an artillery expert. I, you can see here I've got what's that, eight uh, artillery in my garage, including a couple of premiums. Um, I don't play it that often, I play it just for a bit of a light relief and, and to do the missions of course, that's the other thing. Um, but um, you know, some people do love their artillery and, and good good on them. It's a class, I think it's a vital car, class in the game. I think if it isn't there then um, tanks just go into a camping fest and go hull down and there's even more use of gold than there is anyway. Um, whereas artillery makes, makes people move around a bit and yes it can hit things at the other end of the map and you just have to click a button but so so, so do you do when you're firing HESH or HE you just click a button and boom anyway so I hope you found it useful if you did consider giving it a like check out the other video I did on light tanks uh, in fact I did two videos on light tanks one um, looking at the two main varieties of light tanks and then another one looking at gameplay in cities um, so check that on out if you haven't already done so and um, watch out because I plan to do um, some more on mediums and heavies I'll probably have to split both of those into at least two episodes because there's so many different varieties and then also something on tank destroyers and again that will probably be split because there's different types subcategories of uh, TDs 
um, so watch out for them. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, tick like if you get a chance and subscribe as I say if you haven't already done so and then you'll hear about any of the new videos that are coming out. In the meantime, enjoy your games, have fun, try not to take it too seriously and I will see you again soon. This is Gamer Dom signing out.